This is Dimitri Lascaris for The Real News in Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm here today with Deborah Carlson, who is a staff lawyer with West Coast Environmental Law and is part of the Green Communities Program at the law firm. Thanks very much for joining us today. My pleasure. So we, uh, we're hearing more and more nowadays about the problem of sea level rise. And it seems with each passing year or even month, the projections for sea level rise are becoming more and more alarming and even in some cases entirely dire because uh, increasingly it appears that coastal cities, uh, major coastal cities are going to be swamped if we don't radically change our way of living and deal very decisively with the climate crisis. And of course Vancouver is a major uh, metropolitan center in Canada. Uh, it uh, lies on the coast, the western coast of BC. Richmond, for example, I understand lies uh, a full meter below sea level. What, uh, what is the prognosis for Vancouver? What, what can we anticipate for the greater Vancouver area if we see the levels of sea, sea level rise that are being anticipated at this time? Well, Vancouver has a very beautiful location um, here on the coastline, but at the same time it is very vulnerable to sea level rise, um, basically for two different reasons. In some areas like Richmond, it's surrounded by dikes, and if those dikes fail, um, the water comes in. At the moment, the dikes aren't high enough to deal with sea level rise. In other areas that aren't diked, um, we've built up a lot of infrastructure. We've put um, uh, residential development, all kinds of municipal um, development near the water, and that's also very vulnerable to see. What were some of those areas where uh, you have you don't have dikes and there's been development yes. in the Vancouver area? For example, in the, the Burrard Inlet, which has the city of Vancouver, the city of North Vancouver, the district of North Vancouver, the district of West Vancouver, major port infrastructure, all of that is quite vulnerable to sea level rise. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, my understanding is one problem, one aspect of the problem is the seas are rising because of the melting of uh, ice sheets and uh, the glaciers, but also that uh, some urban areas are sinking, uh, a phenomenon uh, referred to by experts as subsidence. Can you tell us about that issue? Is that an issue also for parts of Vancouver and exactly to what degree is subsidence affecting the problem here? Um, it definitely is an issue for certain issues of Greater Vancouver, in particular the parts of Greater Vancouver that are built on the Fraser Delta. The Fraser Delta is the um, land that basically accumulated from the sediments coming down the river, so the soil is quite soft and the weight of development is over time pushing that, um, that level of land lower and lower. Mm -hmm. And that has been accounted for in BC um, sea level rise protections, but it's still a factor to be considered. So is the provincial government, uh, the government of British Columbia, does it seem concerned about this problem? And if so, what is it doing to address the problem? The province of BC has provided sea level projections and guidelines that local governments have to take into account at this point. Um, however, um, I think it could be argued that the projections are somewhat outdated. They're based on science from 2008. Um, they appeared in their current form in 2011, and they don't take into account um, more recent approaches to both the, the science in terms of the projections and also risk management approaches. Mm -hmm. And this, this, you called it guidance, Does I take it from that, that uh, if a municipal government didn't actually take the steps necessary to, uh, to deal with the problem as articulated in the guidance, there wouldn't necessarily be legal consequences because it's just, at the end of the day, guidance. Is that, is that fair? It's fair, although local governments are taking that guidance quite seriously because it's kind of like a roadmap for the future for them. And they can point to it and say, well, the province said that these were the climate projections and we followed those. So it helps to kind of immunize them from any sort of uh, future claims of negligence against them. It's like doing their due diligence. Mm -hmm. So the, the BC government is articulating some guidance having to deal with the problem of sea level rise, which as we know is being precipitated by uh, the warming of the, uh, the atmosphere and the melting of ice, uh, but at the same time it's approving uh, major resource development projects like uh, the trans, or at least it supports, uh, the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion, the construction of liquefied natural gas terminals, all of which runs contrary to the whole notion of reducing our emissions. Uh, it, are there any legal consequences potentially uh, to the provincial government's failure to effectively respect the very concerns that it's articulating to municipalities about sea level rise? Right. Well, I'm not sure there are legal consequences for the province, but there are very practical considerations to the way it's presenting its, its guidance for local governments. 
For example, um, they're giving high level numbers like saying we can expect one meter of sea level rise by 2100. They're not actually digging into what's behind those numbers. And mm -hmm. what it turns out is that they're not making the distinction between what happens if we have uh, a lower climate projection based on lower emissions or higher climate projections based on higher emissions. So people aren't making the connection between how much it's going to cost to address the impacts of climate change and the actions that they need to take in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Mm -hmm. And I understand that in the United States some child plaintiffs have brought forward a case alleging that their constitutional rights are being violated because of the U.S. government's failure to uh, address, address the climate crisis. Where all that will end up, who knows, uh, you know, none of us has a legal crystal ball, but I'm curious, are you aware of any consideration being given by a potential Canadian litigants to invoking uh, their constitutional rights in a similar case against the Canadian government? And if, whether or not you're aware of it, do you think that that would have any prospect of, of success under our Constitution? You know, I'm not aware of any cases of people invoking their constitutional rights, but my colleague Andrew Gage is actually working on um, developing cases where local governments who are affected and have to deal with uh, climate change impacts would sue the large fossil fuel producing companies, holding them responsible for putting the, the fossil fuel emissions up in the atmosphere. And what kind of a legal theory might uh, municipal government advance in, in order to uh, sustain such a claim? Well, essentially it's a, a tort claim, a claim in negligence, that they knew that their actions were going to cause this, this damage, and it did, or potentially a, a claim in nuisance. Right. Well, I'm sure that that'll get the attention of the fossil fuels industry if it ever sees the light of day. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's been a pleasure speaking to you, and uh, we'll certainly continue to follow the story of sea level rise that affects the city of Vancouver. Thanks very much. And this is Dimitri Lascaris for The Real News. Mm -hmm.